before I do, let's talk to Ryan Shawhouse. He's the director of the Centre Right Supporting Think Tank and Pressure Group, Bright Blue, and a former Conservative policy advisor. Because what I wanted to talk to him about is we've been stuck in these weeds, really, since the Owen Patterson affair. And since then, the government hasn't been able to move the agenda on to any of its bigger picture um, issues. We've got a levelling up white paper are coming out but there's absolutely no focus on this so i wanted to bring in ryan very briefly before i get back to your calls just to set out the the big issues that he thinks the government should be tackling evening ryan good evening rachel and i should have said that uh, bright blue has produced a report that is not going to make very happy reading entitled bright blue government failing to impress a public and its 2019 voters um you know rather than dwelling on the negativity which we've had an awful lot of is there anything positive you can bring us in terms of the government government's agenda and what voters actually want to see the government do yeah, OK. So we did we did some polling, which looked at UK public attitudes towards the current government. Uh, generally, most voters believe the government has underperformed, uh, done less well than expected on most policy areas, other than... Is that the good the, news, Ryan? Well, the good, <laughs> Go the good news is for Conservative voters, they are, you know, they're the same as most voters, apart from on climate change and healthcare where they do think the government, on average, has performed better than worse. Um, but as I say, on the whole, it's it's pretty negative. And I think one thing which really comes through in our polling is that when you ask the public how have people on low incomes and the poorest society, how have they done since the 2019 election, most of the public think that those people have done worse financially, whereas people on middle and high incomes um, you know, the majority of people don't think that they've got worse since uh, 2019. So the whole levelling up agenda, of course, the whole reason for uh, kind of uh, that agenda is to support people in left behind areas, uh, you know, former industrial areas, coastal areas, really improve their life chances and their circumstances. And, and you know, that's meant to be the sort of main overriding mission of this government. And it's been blown off course, obviously, by COVID uh, and the chance for the white paper uh, to kind of correct that. But at the moment, there hasn't been any sort of groundbreaking policy, which is dis which you can distinctively identify with this government, which really helps those people on low incomes and the poorest in society. And that's what the government needs to focus on. And I was listening to Michael Heseltine yesterday saying that when it comes to a general election, people basically vote on one metric, which was, will I be better off or worse off under this government? And if the answer is worse off, they'll vote for the other lot. So what did your polling say in terms of the balance on that decision? Yeah, I mean, well, obviously the context is co the cost of living is increasing quite substantially. Inflation is, is now at, um, you know, very record levels for, for the, the past previous decades. It is predicted um, to come down again, though, within a year, I think. Well, well, let's see what happens. I've seen other forecasts which suggest it may go on for a couple of years. Okay. But in terms of what the public say, uh, what you can do to support people on low and middle incomes with the cost of living, I think the main thing is keep prices for everyday goods low is the first choice. The second is increase the minimum wage. And the third is cutting taxes. We've got a paper coming out uh, over the next week, which is specifically looking at how you reform this new health and social care levy, this new national insurance, which the government is applying to uh, all workers to, to inject more funding into the NHS and social care after COVID. Uh, that's really going to bite at a time when inflation is increasing. So we think actually you can reform that, not necessarily abolish it as some Tory MPs want and uh, the Treasury won't go that far. But I do think you can reform it and you can reduce, for example, employers, the employers element of that health and, health and social care levy, uh, which will feed into wages ultimately. And you can reduce the taxation on work and increase it more on wealth. So particularly looking at things like capital gains tax and inheritance tax, just to shift the burden of taxation onto those uh, onto onto wealth away from work, which I think is should be the priority at a time when the economy is very fragile. But also for conservatives, they should be supporting people who are in work and working very hard and not clobbering them with too much tax. 
Sounds very sensible. Thank you very much for that, Ryan Shorthouse, who's the director of the uh, think tank Bright Blue and a former Conservative policy advisor.